Please tell me that's on video. I never been happier. Oh, my God. 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 Welcome to UFC Unfiltered, and uh, how you doing, Fahas? Thanks for coming on today. Great, man. Love to have, love to be on. Um, are you looking forward to this uh, Saturday's card? Like, is it hard for you, like, as a coach, to like look forward to it as a fan? Like, I, I, I'm just dying for this weekend. Honestly, I'm. This is one of the most exciting fights ever put on by UFC. John Jones versus uh, Cyril Gunn. I'm super hyped up on the, about this fight. The Makachev fight and the Volkanovski fight, I was thinking about for months on end. And this fight, I think, is even more exciting. I'm looking forward to this fight even more. And sometimes when fights are so hyped up like this, so important, sometimes they're, they're letdowns, you know. But Volkanovski and Islam were not, definitely not. And this one, I don't think will be either. Did that play out the way you thought it would? And uh, like I, Volkanovski, I mean, everybody knows how tough he is. I was surprised that he was... His takedown defense was as good as it was, and, and he was as hard to, to keep down as he was. Uh, his confidence was warranted. And um, w were you shocked, or did it go the way you thought it might go? You know what? I did a pre-fight analysis for that fight, and originally I was giving it 70-30 to Islam Makachev. But after going through Volkanovski's footage, I went on the air, and I was like, no, no, this is going to be a lot closer. After reviewing all his fights, seeing how busy he is, he hits hard, he hits often, He's incredibly, incredibly versatile. I was like, you know what? I changed my mind. I think I put it like 60-40. I said it's going to be closer than we think. But I still was shocked of how close it is, how close it was. I thought Islam was going to have a nice, comfortable win. And Volk proved everybody wrong. You know, it was, yeah. it was very difficult to call that fight. The one thing I pointed out before the fight, and I was picking Islam for sure, is that it could be tricky for guys that are used to holding down bigger guys the shorter guy, I know for one being the shorter guy, and when I fought in my my whole career, and you know the gentleman I'm talking about, I fought <laughs> somebody shorter than me. This is the first one time. Right. So it's a Canadian, and this guy, a gentleman by the name of Ivan Mezgavar. That's right. You know, you know <laughs> Ivan, don't you? He's, of course. I wrestle with him every day. Oh, you still see him? Yeah, he still trains. Oh, man. Tell me, first trains. of all, what a great guy. Isn't he? I, He's a great and, guy. Uh, great energy indicate one of the nicest guys, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. And like I'm saying, like I had his back, and mm -hmm. you know, I'm, I'm, especially at the time, I'm pretty good at finishing with the rear naked choke. He had no neck, so it was no simpler. Neck. And you're in half guard with this guy, and like he would just give up his back, but he's already on his feet. So it was like yeah. little weird things mm -hmm, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm. only a shorter, more impact person could do, and. You know, he's, I thought that that might possess a problem. And he's it, incredibly it, difficult to leg lock, armbar, choke. Ivan Menjavar, for those of the guys, those of you who don't know, he fought at 145. Nobody could fight at 145. There was no 145 at, at UFC at the time. He moved up to fight Matt Serra in UFC. Matt Serra wins, controlled his back. Matt Serra at the time, uh, you guys all know, is the submission master. Couldn't get a sub on a guy with no neck, no limbs. Guys, how do you slide your yeah. hand under that neck? It's yeah. so difficult. You're 100% right. Sometimes the geometry just doesn't fit this guy. Listen, I wrestle Ivan Manjavar to this day. Okay, and I, I train full-time. He doesn't. He trains part-time. I still have a incredibly difficult time putting any subs on him. His, 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 sh there's an advantage to have li short limbs. Oh, I and know. There's an advantage to having no neck. There's an advantage. The man has no neck. He's all traps. Yeah. And, that was exactly and, what Matt's exactly what you said about uh, Volkanovsky. That's exactly what you said about him. It's going to be hard to, to wrap around his neck. I think Volkanovsky said he himself was unchokable because yeah. uh, he knows he has no neck. But you, Matt, you were 100% on that. You know what blows my mind? If you look at when he choked out Oliveira, Oliveira tapped feverishly. That's an experienced black belt, but Oliveira has a very long neck. Oh, yeah. He's got long limbs. But when he put that arm triangle on him, as soon as he passed the guard, as soon as Oliveira was tapping feverishly. Like to me, that's like that must be an incredible squeeze on the guy. Like you think you'd wait a while, wait till you pass out. Like he tapped, like he didn't even attempt an escape from Islam. That's how strong Islam's squeeze must be. You know, but like you said, there's nothing to squeeze. It kind of reminded me, not to segue into the fights. The other night, uh, another Canadian, Mike Malat, 
Talk about mm. a squeeze. I mean, that was mm. the same thing. You know mm. it's trouble when somebody gets a head and arm choke or uh, also known as the arm triangle uh, from half guard. Just like you said, it was very similar the other day with Milan. He mm. had that in half guard, and then he got three quarters mount. The foot was still trapped. He was tapping. He actually mm-hmm. put himself in it more trying to get out. Um, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Lanez. Lanez. Yeah. Johan yeah. Leones, yeah. Actually, yeah. he trained, for, trained with me a bit for that fight. And he just started training with us. Uh, but he got caught with a very, very deep arm triangle. But also, uh, Malat has long arms. Yeah. You know? He's got long arms. Those arms lock around you. It's very difficult to undo. Makachev, his arms are, I, I would say, a little bit on the long side. Not not that long. But the way he he tapped a seasoned black belt in Oliveira. You know, Oliveira has had, you know, he's had his black belt for over 10 years. For him to tap that way. It's it's very surprising, and they also I think they said that once Volkanovski goes back to 145 and and defends against Yair, that there mm. will be a rematch between him and Makachev. But does that mean Makachev doesn't have to fight until after this? That there's nobody else uh, to fight him, or are they going to assume that he wins a fight uh, in the meantime and then gets assuming that they both win their uh, defending their title? I, I doubt time? I doubt they keep Makachev on the shelf that long. Right. I think they think Makachev is going to win regardless. So they'll give him a fight. He'll win it very likely. He's in his prime right now. I think UFC and everyone's banking on Volkanovski winning at 145, which I would agree. Like right now, I would pick Volkanovski against Yair. Even though Yair impressed me immensely, he brings new attributes to Volk that Volk has never seen. Volk has never seen that type of kicking before. He's seen long fighters. He's seen very durable fighters, but he's never seen anybody with those type of kicks. But nonetheless, I would still... Right now, without getting too deep in it, I would still pick, pick Volk. I think UFC is very confident Volk will win, Islam will win, and they fight. And if Islam were to lose, there'll be a mega rubber match. Were you surprised uh, at, at how uh, how well Yair did against Josh Emmett? Uh, I had I, Josh Emmett picked in that fight, um, I, and Yair I, I was incredible. Too. It's the best I've ever seen him. I, I did too. I, th- I, I thought that the first two rounds would go to Yair, and then after slowly, Emmett can pick it up. Um Emmett didn't fight to his best. You know, I'm not taking anything away from Yair's performance. He fought brilliantly. He attacked the body. He landed body kicks, body teeps. His kicks were phenomenal. But I felt like I felt that wasn't the best Josh Emmett we've seen. We've seen Josh Emmett really do a lot better than that. At one point, he was throwing overhand rights nonstop, and they were telegraphed, and they were slow. I wonder why. I think it was those body kicks. I think he was very hurt to the body. But generally, we've seen him perform a lot better than that. Yeah, but when's the last time we seen him with somebody like Yair? I mean, Yair is a wacky gentleman. Don't get me yeah. wrong; we've seen him with guys with the likes of Jeremy Stevens and he fought other- Qatar. Don't forget, he beat Qatar. Emmett beat Qatar. Oh, he did, but yeah, but Qatar is that more traditional boxing, <laughs> not yeah. J.R. Sullivan, but like, but, <laughs> but, uh, but no, he's got that more of a traditional, straight up traditional boxing. Yeah, he's a he's a puncher. He's yeah, definitely he's, a puncher. Yeah, a hundred percent. And Yair is just funky, man. He, mm-hmm. he's, a guy, he's one of those guys where, again, going into that fight, I was picking Yair, and I just thought that I know Yair's seen way more guys like Emmett than Emmett did Yair. You Definitely. know what I mean? So Yair's a, he's, got the, he's, a, he's a funky guy. Even when you get on top of him, he has a way to win from bottom just by striking. I mean, he's just – he came a long way from the Yair where he has that fourth Frankie Edgar that could just Definitely. get shut down. Right. You've seen improvements. You've seen a maturity there as a fighter. And against the Korean zombie, I, I thought that uh, if I remember that fight, it's been a few years. I remember, uh, I, I thought that uh, the, the zombie was winning until the, the final round and then he landed that elbow. Um, but I thought that he was uh, beating Ayer, if I remember correctly, and then he just threw that beautiful elbow in the last couple of seconds and, and won the fight. Am I crazy to remember it that way? It was close. It was close. I, I'd have to go back and watch it, but it was very, very close and that elbow... That's the thing with Yair. He's extremely creative. Yeah. How many other guys kick the way he does in UFC? I can't even think of one other guy that has those type of kicks. The only guy that was wacky like that, like had some wacky shit, was that Zabit that retired. Oh, yes. And they were always trying to set those guys up to fight, but it never went through. Right. uh, right. You know, I forgot. What what, Did he he retired or he went to another promotion? I think he went to medical school. He wanted to go to medical school, I think. Yeah, Jimmy. Uh, Magomed like Shripoff, that. right? Was that his name? Zabit uh, Magomed Shripoff? Or my... We call him Zabit. I don't know. I just okay. know him I like Zabit. to call him Zabit, Jimmy. <laughs> and Jimmy, I had that same dilemma. I mean, fighting the Jimmy, game. we get hit in the head <laughs> for a living, huh? It's tough enough for us. Oh, Two wow. syllables is our max. It's our max uh, capability. So let me, wow. Vaz, let me ask you, Meryl. So you're, you're living, 
you're living a life similar to mine. I'm going to say you're living at that gym. You try star. How's it going? Is it going really right? good, man? Really good. We had that uh, crazy shutdown. I don't think I don't know if I want to mention it on the air too much because they'll flag us. I, uh, Canada is very strict. YouTube is very strict. I don't know about you guys, but remember yeah. when they shut us down? Canada was like a military state all of a sudden. Yeah. Uh, they closed the borders. They wouldn't allow us to open the gym. I would even take the guys training in the park. They would come and uh, shut us down, kick us out of the park. Like we couldn't even train in open Outside. air. Outside, uh, it was crazy. Canada went full on uh, shutdown. It was it was wild. It was a wild and crazy time. It lasted two years. It was very, very difficult. Now we're reopened. We're rebuilding. Uh, people are traveling to TriStar again to, to to train. But the border was closed for about two years. So it was really difficult for us. Yeah, it opened up, I want to say, um, or maybe August or, or so of 21. It was, it was closed for a long time. And there was one point in Montreal where they were fining people. Like you, there was up to a $6,000 fine if they caught you outside after curfew That's or right. if they caught you with more than two people. Um, yeah, they, they went really overboard, even outside. I'm still, I still have court dates. I have four, I have four fines. I'm going to court over this. I mean, they shut down my gym. They surrounded my building. I was on the front page of the newspaper. I refused to close. And, uh, now I'm, uh, facing the, the court system over it. It was, it was a wild time. I, I believe in like civil disobedience. I think there's a way to go about it. I was totally against the, the word I can't say, uh, because I don't want you guys to get flagged on this, on this episode, but. Canada was extremely strict, extremely, and it was a major, major setback for us. But now we're rebuilding better than ever. The gym is busy again. People are traveling from all over again to train with us. But for two years, actually, it wasn't 2021. It was 2022. We shut down from 2020 to 2022. And it was it was devastating for the economy. All medium-sized businesses, small, medium-sized businesses got destroyed. Over 50% of them went bankrupt. It was a disastrous time. Uh, but now we're looking forward. We've been open up. For more than a year now, things are coming back up and uh, uh, we're putting things back together again. Yeah, they had hotels were closed for a long time, like like longer than you would have thought was necessary. Like, you know, six months after things were opening in a lot of places, they were still <laughs> shut down. I'm like, well, what the fuck? I was traveling to the States for fights and I would land in the American airport. It was packed, jam packed. The Canadian airports were a ghost town. There was yeah. literally nobody there. I'd go to my flight. There's four or five other people on the plane. Like It was so... It, Canada was like uh, completely closed off from the rest of the world. Anyways, and it was a mad yeah. time, let's just say. Yeah, it was. And as a person that's in this business, it was scary. Like, I remember, like, during it, I had this podcast. Thank God it's a paying gig. It's a nice thing. And, uh, you know, once in a while, I'd do something with Dana for looking for a fight. Even though we didn't have, we weren't able to go to fights, we would do looking forward to a fight. So there was some other income coming in. But holy shit, man, it almost made it seem like, my like right now, my retirement is my school. I'm always at my school. It's what I do. My, mm -hmm. my girls are training, my wife's training. And uh it almost was like, man, this is all you know, just it is it ever gonna go back? And thankfully now we know the answer. It's it's getting back to normal. But during the midst of it, it's like, yo, is this just life forever changed? You know? Mm. But it feels good to get through it though, Fahaz. We got through uh, it. hundred percent. I'm so glad it was a nightmarish time for us. I'm happy it's done and, and over with. I don't know. I'm sure you guys saw the truckers, the Canadian truckers, man. Really yeah. they really blew the doors open. I don't care what anybody says. It changed from night from night and day after the trucker uh, took a stand. I didn't think the government wants to tangle with them anymore. I think the people were fed up and it really blew the doors open. Yeah, you kind of got the feeling and you get it here too. That if they ever, if that was ever to be suggested again, that people just wouldn't go through that again. And, and you know, mm -hmm. and yeah, and you need truckers because, I mean, I think without trucks, 75% of your business is shut down or whatever. So people never think of truck drivers, but if the truck drivers are pissed off at you, you're in trouble. Because uh, if they don't move or they don't travel, nothing gets done. Absolutely. There's nothing on the shelves. You know, uh, it, yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, you're right. Go ahead. I was just going to say over the weekend, it was a bummer about the main event with Ryan Spann and, and uh, Krylov. Yeah. Yes. And we had, we had him on, we had a, uh, uh, Nikita on and he was right. That's, we have yeah. On? Yeah. Krylov was on. I think it was last on. Wednesday. Yeah. That was depressing, but yep. Brendan Allen and, uh, Andre Munoz, that was a fun main. That could have been a main event anyway. Did you see the fights? Uh, boss? No, I, I just saw the highlights. I didn't watch it all the way up to the end, but uh, it was back and forth. I saw him. Uh, he got he got taken down and, and reversed it and got in the back and did a beautiful finish. I love to see that. Some nice grappling there in the later in the third round. 
Uh, but I definitely wanted to watch Span. I love, I'm, I'm a big fan of Span, yeah. Red Span, and uh, he's got that KO power. He's explosive. He, he fights nasty. Uh, Karilov is a beast. He's a karate guy who wrestles. So I, that was also very exciting to see that matchup. I don't know. What did he have? Did he have like a, he had the flu or what was it? I, I have not found out what was wrong. It was, it was so close. They said that he was flagged by, I guess, the doctors said he couldn't fight, uh, mm. that he, he tried to, to get taken care of, and they actually said no. I think it was something with his stomach. And as a guy with ass problems, I can relate. <laughs> hey, 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 listen, man. I get it, bro. Hey, that, maybe I'm missing that, something. Pepto Bismo and get him back in there as soon as possible. <laughs> but, um, I, first, fight of the night. There was no fight of the night awards given out. And am I? Is there something that I that needed to qualify? Like Ode Osborne against Charles Johnson, I thought was like, such a great fight, such a back and forth fight. Um, and I was surprised that didn't get it. Um, they they didn't give out any bonuses for fight of the night. And I'm not exactly sure why. Well, they got performance of the night though. Yeah, yeah. So they have to. They I, get... guess, I mean, yeah, I guess that, that yeah, I'm with you though. That was that wasn't that was a great fucking fight. And they yeah, they gave out six uh uh performance of the night bonuses. Nice to see Tatiana Suarez look great. Um oh yes, Armin Guillotine. Yeah, and uh she's a powerful girl. Like we had she's her incredible. on Tatiana, and she was talking about how she was wrestling since she's like I don't know how old she was, like anywhere from like three to five. She was young because she had an older brother that wrestled. And you know, and you know the deal with that, uh, is they got those wrestlers, they start them young. It's a different kind of strength. Like mm-hmm. a kid that's been in judo since a kid, they got that, they got that strength where, you know, she put on a guillotine. And I'll tell you, um uh it's it's the name's uh slipping me. Who she who she was fighting? She was fighting uh who was she fighting? Where where did the fucking thing go? Oh, Montana de la Rosa. I'm sorry. That's Montana, right. Montana was she was doing great. She was doing great in the first round. That was a competitive round. She got mm. taken down, but she was surviving. She got up. She yeah. had strikes. But uh, she protected kind of herself of, well. Yeah, yo, oh, yeah. She was defending herself well on the floor. And, uh, you know, that Tatiana Suarez, I think it was just a little bit of a different level in grappling. Guys, mark my words. She's the Khabib of the division. Ooh. Nobody's going to stop her. Nobody's uh, going to stop her. Of what division? Because she went up in She's, this one. She 150, 125. 115. She went up to 125 for one fight. Was that a 115 that, this last weekend? Or was it No, I think it was 125. Yeah. Look, I, she's made 115 before, Tatiana. I mean, I, the 115, I don't know how they stop her. You guys saw her fight with Esparza. Well, Esparza is a seasoned wrestler. She just put her on her back, mauled her, controlled her. The, tra- the chain wrestling she has, the quality of muscle she has, I think she's going to go all the way to the top. I think she she runs through the entire division. She was gonna, she's going to touch gold. She's going she's gonna to be like the Khabib of the division. Well, Even after I, I got a question. I got I got I got two questions. I got two names. Which one am I talking about first? Let me think here. Uh with, with Tatiana Suarez, the first name is uh Erin Blanchfield. Mm. Shield. She's a great grappler. Arras. Where is she taking her? Is she taking her down? Does she want that's, to be down there with her? That's a that's what a dangerous happen? fight. JJ Aldridge was doing great with her. She left the neck out one time. That's all she needed. Elbow mm-hmm, up, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Kimura Listen, on Meatball you... Mahoney. Meatball right. McCann. McCann, sorry. Mahoney, who the fuck is that? Uh, <laughs> no, know what I love? You can name a different submission for each person. I'm very well-rounded in the jiu-jitsu. Mm-hmm. And she's shown with a fight with Andraj, she'll stay in the pocket also with a beast like that and, and outstrike him and then set up that inside leg trip. How last? I'm telling you, I can't talk enough. Aaron Blanchfield, that's... the man radar is up she's everybody should be keeping an eye on her because that's a real threat yeah i know and i love tatiana also but i would mm. i mean that fight that'd be that'd be interesting i i agree with you technically i would say even blanchfield is superior but but the attacks per minute tatiana's on another level her attacks per minute i don't think people can keep up because when you're wrestling from that young you're chain wrestling you're chain wrestling you're chain wrestling you know i'll tell you something about about young young brains you know young brains if you look at the a young brain it's not wrinkled it's it's wrinkled but not as much as an adult brain when you train at a young age it, they call it hardwired your brain wrinkles as your brain is wrinkled wrinkling as you get older your brain wrinkles more and more it gets hardwired to wrestle so you when you learn wrestling when you're 10 12 that's one thing when you learn it when you're three four years old and you're learning proper technique at a young age 
you have like you get it, you develop like a GSP type muscle quality. You see that muscle quality, they never get tired. They chain wrestle and chain wrestle. It's moves per minute. It's not just moves. Because I'll tell you, Blanchfield, she's more sophisticated. Inside trip, the grappling, it's more, it's more sophisticated. She she's more of a of a student of the game. But when it comes to attacks per minute, nobody touches Tatiana. What an interesting thing, too. I, I never heard that about the brain wrinkling and it making you hardwired. And I bet you, I'm, I'm as you're talking, I'm literally thinking of shitty habits I have that started <laughs> when I was very young. And I'm like, I wonder if that stuff does get hardwired into you. Mm -hmm. Not only good things like wrestling, but bad habits or weird things that you attach to get uh, hardwired into you. Because I wondered how that stuff happens. I really think, that's think about it. Think about when you learn a language. You learn a language just by hearing it as a kid. You don't know the grammar rules. You don't know grammar rules, but you can speak English. Try to teach English. That's tough, man. I'm not trained in the art of English. But when you learn English in your 30s or your 20s, you have to go and learn all the grammar rules because it's too late. You've, pa you've passed that, that sensitive time where the brain just can hardwire. So, like, if you if you learn English and you're in your 20s, you're always going to have an accent. We're going to know, hey, no, this guy's native tongue is not English. You know, you always have a little bit of an accent. Try to learn Italian. You know, the Italians are going to know you're not really Italian. You don't have to be Italian to learn Italian at a young age. You could be any race. Right. If you're born, if you're, when you're submerged in wrestling at that young age, like look at Khabib. He was wrestling bears. When he, that's what I'm telling you. She's the Khabib of the division. The guy was wrestling bears. He was five years old. Yeah. If, if you ask Khabib to show you a move, he might not know how he does it. He just does it. It's just part of his, 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 his way of being. The other name, Mackenzie Dern in the other weight division. Yeah. Where I'm going with this, Fahaz. It's exciting. It's getting exciting. That was very sophisticated. It was mm. the thing with the wrinkly brain. <laughs> yeah, it was. It made my wrinkly brain go. What the fuck? Fuck. Also, fuck. Rose. I wouldn't mind seeing her against Rose. Yeah, but Rose, my, point definitely. Is, my point is Rose did get out grappled by Carl at one point. So my thing is styles make fights. The two girls I named. What what Tatiana is hardwired to do, you know, Uh is to be putting these girls exactly where they don't mind being at all on their back. Mackenzie Dern, the biggest problem with her is, is probably the wrestling, you know, the chain mm. or as our friend, John Danner would call it for Haas, the art of the shoot box where George <laughs> was very good at going from the striking to the shots. I mean, Marab is another one. Marab has it uncanny. Mm -hmm. Or he'd go with wrestlers straight up. They beat him. George St. Pierre visited New York. He rolled with, uh, he did feet the floor wrestling with this guy, Jay Haran. What mm -hmm, happened when they mm -hmm, fought? Mm -hmm. Jay Haran, who's a great guy, thought, all right, man, I wrestled with him. I, mm -hmm. I'm a very good wrestler. It's a different thing when you add the strikes in. 100%. Even though he did with strikes in that one. But still, uh, it's a different thing, the art. 100%. He, he couldn't take George down in their fight. Jay Haran fought George. They trained in New York. Feet the floor, just regular wrestling. He took George down. George told me, look, I got taken down by him. In the fight, though, Haran, Haran couldn't get it to the floor. Oh, no. He couldn't. It's a different game. Shoot boxing is a different game. A hundred percent. And I believe in the striking department, Tatiana's not looking bad, but she wouldn't have a level. She wouldn't have be levels above these girls. It would be on no. par. When push comes to shove, she'll go for a shot. She'll put them down, and then it'd be very entertaining. You're saying she could be like the the Habib of that division. Exactly. I mean, Habib had a way of of taking jujitsu guys and just smothering them. I don't know. Could she do that? She did it with uh, Montana the other day, Montana mm -hmm. the other day, yeah. but uh, these other girls I'm talking about. You, they're, you, they're another level. They're definitely another, another level. level. I'm excited about it. I would listen. Yeah. I would mm -hmm. love to see it. You know, I would love to the see thing it. is, the thing is wrestling has an advantage for one reason in MMA, because by the time you work your submissions, the round is over. You don't have a lot of time. Let's say they circle for two minutes and then you get taken down. Okay. Yeah. You got three minutes to sub somebody who's really experienced. I always say, look, jujitsu was developed in no time limits rule. If you told me Tatiana was fighting Dern in no time limit, I would pick Dern. If you told me, hey, it's, we're going to go old Valley Tudo rules. The fight's not going to end till somebody gets knocked out or subbed. I would pick Dern's because she's going to lay in guard and she's going to eventually fish for a submission. She's going to eventually get it. Yeah. Tatiana doesn't really have a way to finish. Wrestlers don't necessarily have a way to finish. However, when... You know how it is. Sometimes it's not easy to sub somebody in two, three minutes. It's just not that easy. They have to make a mistake. Now, if you give me an unlimited time to catch this person with a sub, I could wrestle. I could grapple. I could play guard forever. You know, I could protect myself in guard and find my way. It's just a different element, you know, and then th that's why wrestling has an advantage because you only have five minutes at a time. 
That's why I love the pride rules, Matt. Pride, yeah. they gave you 10 minutes. The first round was 10 minutes. I loved it. And they counted everything as one round. So it was it was different. It was you, they need to change the rule set to give jujitsu guys more ability to work their style. Yeah. Hey, and Volkanovski, by the way, his mm. fight with Islam. If it was the old Pride rules, he's winning because they judge it like a fight. Whoever one they, round, they, yeah, one round. At the end, like at the, how the fight ends, is way more important than a fight begins in mm-hmm. the old Pride rules because it's all right. all right. That guy almost started. If it's let's say a guy almost gets started the fight, they almost get knocked out, and then at the end of the fight, they end it like um, Bokanowski ended it. They'll give it to that guy because they're like, all right, look, if this is a real fight, that guy's well on his way to winning this. This is, you know, that guy's lucky he got out. So they kind of it's a different scoring system altogether. Yeah, but I, I will about- say this with the Bokanowski fight, and I talked about this before because we talk about how, and there has been some conversations how Sambo is. You know, if Sambo was easy, it'd be called jujitsu and blah blah blah. I, I get, a, I, get kind of, I get, I get a little offended with that shit. I do. I get a, yeah, you know, ridiculous. you know, it gets me a little annoyed. But my point is, let's say if uh, Volkanovski instead of get instead of enlisting his buddy there, Craig Jones, to help him, let's say he enlisted one of the best Sambo guys. I don't believe that the, the Sambo's assault, the Sambo's arsenal, and their attacks. It's a it's a dominating art, and that's why it does so well. They like to be on top, strong wrestling base, with, and then they got the strikes. But it doesn't have the same defense and survival uh, tactics as uh, skills as as ju- Brazilian jiu jitsu. So that's why I thought it was perfect for uh, Volkanovski to be working with Craig Jones, who's uh, mm-hmm. one of the mm-hmm. uh, one of the best grapplers on the planet, because. Mm-hmm. When he was in those horrendous positions, the back when he had his back triangle, then he was getting get, looking about to get strangled, and he knew how to he knew the right defenses from with jujitsu, and that's what helped him arguably win that fight. It was a very close fight. Islam won, but that's what yeah. helped. That's what had him survive. Mm-hmm. If he was just training with fucking Sambo Sid, he's not getting <laughs> the guy down. I don't care with the shorts and the jacket. He's not doing anything. He had the right survival skills. To not only survive, but to be comfortable in an uncomfortable situation. So, but let me ask you this: What if the first round? Let's say we're doing pride rules, okay? Yes. What if the first round is ten minutes? Now, Islam took him down in round one. He only had a he only had about you know a minute or so to work his subs. What if he had? What if he had six more minutes? Well, that, that I mean, listen, it's not pride, but I would you. Know, but if it was, we said, what if it is? <laughs> We could we could have seen a first round finish. It's also possible. It's I'm not saying it's 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 the case, but if he had six more, you know, it's not easy to sub a guy in one minute. You took him down, you danced around, you punched, you punched each other, you wrestled back and forth, you finally get it down on the ground. There's 60 seconds left, roughly. You're trying to put a rear gonna get choke on the guy, and the guy's holding that two on one with his dear life. He only has to hold on for a minute. But what if it's six minutes he needs to hold on to? And that's a different world. That's it becomes a different bargain now. It's a different way. Of seeing the possible the possible outcomes. Did I, I wanted to ask you guys too about uh, a leave against Alves the uh, the bite? Uh, did you think <laughs> that was a bite, or did you believe that it was an actual mistake? One of those things that just kind of happens when you're tied up, or do you think he got carried? They said that we couldn't f- catch it on video, so I guess they couldn't disqualify him. They just took a point. What did you think? Well, he had his hand around his neck and kind of in his mouth. You're not supposed to fish hook either. Right. You're not supposed to touch the mouth with your fingers. Now, it's a bite, but also, don't forget, he has a mouthpiece on. So, th- it's a bite. Your, your bottom teeth are open. They're bare, but don't forget, there's a mouth. It's not, it's not a bite. Like It's still a bite, but it's not that dangerous. Okay, The guy wasn't bleeding. But also, you're not supposed to put your hands on the man's mouth. You're not supposed to do that. So, I, I think it was a bite. You should, you should never bite. I'm not saying you should bite, but I didn't see a bite, but I believe he did because, I mean, the ref said he saw a mark. So, you how are you going to get a mark? Yeah, but you also saw, you seen when um, he was, you, and there was a language thing, but he was telling him, look, you can't, after you took the point away, and and, and, and the ref was telling him, look, you can't, you can't bite. And he's like, ah, you don't need a, you don't need a translator, but he's like, ah. <laughs> yeah. He shook at himself, like, what the fuck? What do you want me to do? It's not like I'm sitting there like, ah. He's not like, <laughs> fucking, ah. No, he had his, he's fucking. Yeah, he was fish hooking. He was you fish hooking. But you're like, I forgot about fish hooking, right? Because Matt. you see guys covering the mouth all the time. So you can touch the mouth on yeah. the outside. Yeah. Yeah. But Matt, if a guy slips his finger in your mouth, what are you going to do? 
I'm gonna freak him out. I'm gonna be yeah. like, I'm gonna bite him. <laughs> and I'm gonna fucking Jimmy might like it. No, no, no. What you do is you just suck his finger slowly and make eye contact, and he'll quit. <laughs> I'll make me take my hand out of it. <laughs> You know, we touched base with the John Jones and the Ciro Gone, and I. Uh, but you never gave your opinion on who do you think would win. So, yeah, so I know what I'm thinking. I, who I are you know picking? what I've been preaching. Who are you picking? I think John Jones is going to take him down and, and submit him. That's really? right. Oh, I, I can see a rear naked choke. I can see. Uh-huh. A I can see. I can see several submissions. Head and arm choke. Let's not forget he submitted Dan Henderson. I know he's bigger, mm-hmm. but. I think he's got underused. Look at his fight with Quinn Jackson, where one round he just fucked around and just went to both knees, had to put his head under the crotch and threw him over his fucking head. <laughs> I mean, he is. Look, his fight with Gustafin. I know there was he was partying before, yada yada. It was a competitive fight, the first fight. Second fight, um, he's not destroyed fucking him. around. What did he do? Took him destroyed down him. and destroyed him. And he took him down on the floor. And he, I believe his jujitsu is uh, underrated. Cyril God not only accepts, a lot of times he goes through his back, it costs him the title. He accepts going to the back. He lays down with leg locks. I'm not, I don't know how great the guy's fight IQ is. So I believe John John Jones is going to submit him. That's what I feel. I think I pick John also. How do you think he's going to win? Here's the thing. I, I think he's going to win by striking and control. I know a lot of people are going to tell me I'm crazy, but I think John will also outstrike him because John has incredible elbows. And his takedown threat is going to cause a lot of uh, setups for John's kicks and elbows and punches. If John is going in there striking and wrestling, he's going to win. The striking threat and the wrestling th- threat simultaneously is going to be too much for Gan, in my opinion. I think it goes to decision because Gan doesn't have that one KO power. Like if you look at all his KOs, they're cumulative strikes. He hurts a guy, he jumps on him, he puts a lot of volume, but the guys never go out. They're never laid out on a stretcher. You know, he didn't lay Eric. Derek Lewis out on a stretcher. He didn't lay Tuvesa out on a stretcher. Yeah, he piled him up with strikes, but he doesn't have that Nganu one-shot kill. So I think it goes to decision. Neither does John, by the way. Neither does John. John's a cumulative strike type guy, but he's too diverse. And here's the thing. John's 84 and a half inch reach is something Cyril has never seen. Do you think... The man has I, the longest I, reach in UFC history. I, I have uh, I'm picking Jones by decision too, but do you think he has a problem dealing with Cyril moving as well as he moves, kicking the way he kicks at heavyweight? Uh, you know, most heavyweights have never seen anybody like Cyril gone, and has Jones going up in weight? Is that going to affect him facing somebody who moves as well as Cyril does? Gone fights with his hands down. You're right. He's a tiptoe guy. He's on his toes like Ali style. But so is Mashida. Mashida was similar when Mashida fought Jones. Nobody was understanding what Mashida does. Okay, Mashida was on his. Toes, hands down. He caught Jones with a couple of, of uh, crosses. And then J- Jones is incredible at adapting. He adapted midway through the fight, knocks Mashida down with a Superman punch. Like, I think John is very well aware. He's seen that kind of fighter. Hands down, tiptoeing. John is much better at adapting than Cyril. Cyril is fantastic. Don't get me wrong. I think this is going to be a very close fight. I just feel that John has seen that style. He understands it. It's not gonna. It's not going to be bizarre to him. The kicks that Gunn throws are incredible, yes, but John has seen that before. John has seen that. It's surreal that's never seen an 84 and a half inch reach with a guy who can move the way John does with those elbows. He's going to fake shots. He's going to throw elbows. He's going to get takedowns, and then surreal is going to be worried about the takedown. The kicks are going to come. He's too versatile, too experienced, too many weapons. He's going to surprise game. Uh, another fight that I'm really looking forward to on this card, but who's Gamrod against Jalen Turner? Uh, this card is pretty packed uh, from from top to bottom. But everyone's talking about Shevchenko against Grasso. I I, I think uh, that's a fight I'm looking forward to probably almost as much as Jones is uh, Jalen Turner Matus Gamrod. How do you see that going? Uh, I'm a big Gamrod fan. I think uh, I think he he needs a win and he's he's gonna put it together. Um, his chain wrestling, his pressure. I think there's not many guys who could deal with that. You have to be somebody very special to deal with this type of pressure. I like Gamrot with that also. Uh, you got to think uh, Jalen Turner, the, the tarantula, right? The, the, right? The tarantula, Jimmy? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, <laughs> I, feel, <laughs> I feel that uh, 
if people, you know, they don't give Matt Steamroller for Volar. That guy, they don't give him enough credit. Steamroller got underneath him, and he got some nice double legs on him. He took him down. That fight was like a monster movie because because the, the tarantula is so big, you know, mm. uh, Jalen Turner. But I feel Gamrod, he, he's a very well-rounded guy, man. He has some good fights. Uh, again, only two losses. I I, I feel Gamrod's going to get in underneath him and, and have his way. Mm. I think he's, he's too experienced. Home. Yeah, he puts it together nicely, you know. And uh, Derek Brunson against Driscus Duplessis, another great fight. That's on the prelims. It's hard to see, picture Cody Garbrandt on the against Trevin Jones is the main fight of the prelims. Brunson is the fight right before that. Um, I think Duplessis wins that fight, but I, I, I kind of I would love to see Brunson. I, I'm such a big Derek Brunson fan. I, I still have fantasies that he's going to get another title shot. But you know, again, as you get older, it gets harder. Uh, but I, I would love to see Brunson win that fight. That's a hard one to call, but uh, Brunson's got that KO power and he's got to reach. And he's been in there with the best of the best. Like he's seen the worst the UFC has to offer, the, the most dangerous guys. And he, you know, he's done well. He's had some bad losses, but he's done well. He's seasoned and he has that KO power. He's got a great reach. He can get it done. Not an easy one, though. No. I'm more concerned with Jimmy's fantasies of fucking Derek Brunson. Brunson. I just like Derek Brunson. You know, I've been a Derek Brunson fan for years. I love Derek Brunson. We have him on here, though. Don't make it weird. You know, he's going to hear about your fantasy. <laughs> want to. He'll probably might, appreciate that someone uh, is, supports him. I, I, I'm thinking he's 38. I, I might be wrong. I'm going to look that up right now. Is he 38? Um, uh, no, he's 39. Oh, oh really? Geez. Yeah, he's 39. So, you know, he's. I, I, I always root for guys as they, you know, as, as the years are closing. Of course, you always want to see somebody. That's fucking that's why, that's why everybody loved Cormier so much. Um, you know, and Teixeira. Hey. Hey, Valentina Shevchenko versus Alexa Grasso. I know we're going all over the place. Yeah. This is the, this is the co-main. It's for the belt. Uh, you know, Alexa Grasso, tough Mexican fighter. I mean, she, I mean, does she have the tools? That they, I, Valentina's just been so, I mean, I, I'm, I mean, besides maybe losing a round here or there, I mean, she's been practically flawless. I mean, I mean, the only one that really best her would be uh, Amanda Nunes. And that was, those were close fights. <laughs> you know what I mean? So, I mean, I don't know, man. It's so hard to, 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 to be able to pick against Valentina, even though I, I like, I like the skill set with Alexa. I do, you know? So I, I don't know. I mean, I, I can't root, root. I can't pick against, I shouldn't say, shouldn't say root because I don't have a horse in the game here. Right. Horse in the race. But I'm going, I mean, uh, Valentina, it's, it's just really, She's just looking so like she's won nine in a row since the Nunes loss. What's Valentina, that? Na, Valentina has won nine in a row since the Nunes loss. Think about that. And that was a different division. And the out and the loss is by getting out pointed by like takedowns and stuff. It's mm, not like exactly she's sitting there, wow, she got her ass whipped and now she has to go back up, uh, go down and no man, it was thin, razor thin. So yeah. listen, yeah, she's I uh, man. I, I can't go against Valentina, even though no I, I feel like Alexa. She knows what she has. She's shown a re really like, I don't know. Could, could Valentina take it down and get her? Um, see, the thing is with her skill set, it's not like she has to take anybody down. But once she's been so dominant on the floor, because everything's of her a striker, she gets them down and she gets them. She gets the she crucifix. Gets the, uh, crucifix. Mm -hmm. And, uh, woo, that's all that. I mean, a lot of times that's all she wrote. And she hits so, hard, man. She's a hard oh. hitter. The Jessica I head kick. I mean, she has power. She can grapple. She has power. Nobody's beating her in that division. It's going to be a while before anybody catches her. You know, Grasso's great, but uh, Shevchenko's, she's the boss in them. She's somebody like, almost like Jones in the fact that you almost have to take them until they lose. Like, it's hard to pick against someone like Valentina until mm -hmm. somebody actually beats her. And I, and I kind of feel the same way about John. Maybe it's a respect thing. Or it's just that you've seen him do so well against so many different styles of fighter. But I, I can't pick anyone over Valentina uh, until I actually see her lose. Who, who has ever had a dominant round against John Jones? Like it's it's even like you could see, Gustafson. You could say, yeah, you could say he's lost a round, but who's who's crushed him in a round? Like who's dominated him in a round? It, even when he loses a round, it's so razor thin. It's controversial. It's it's tough to call. Even his tightest fights are tough to call. Um. This is his hardest match ever, guys. The Cyril Gunn is his hardest fight ever. Make no mistake about it. I don't think it's an easy fight at all. I just feel that John is more talented. He has more He has more of everything, even in the striking department. I know people are going to call me crazy. I think John is going to outstrike him. Very possibly, he's going to outstrike him. He has more elbows. He has more. 
he has more to he has more to fake with his takedowns gun has to be always on high alert for those takedowns and that's going to open up strikes yeah and dad uh, cormier in their their last fight uh before jones head kicked him if i re- am i remembering that cormier was up is that the third round and cormier was i thought again that was another fight i thought cormier was winning but maybe i don't think he was dominating him but i do i do thought cormier and again that's just it's been years since i've seen that fight i'd have to rewatch it but i remember Jones took him down. So, I mean, I think it was the first time Cormier ever got taken down his entire career. And he's an Olympian. Don't forget, he went to the yep. Olympics in wrestling. So, I mean, that's the level of John Jones. That's why I'm telling you, yes, Cyril Gunn's a great striker, but he'll he'll strike with the best of the best strikers out there. He's not shy to strike. You know, John, he probably thinks of himself more as a striker than a wrestler. Well, I think yeah. within two rounds. Really? That easy, huh? <laughs> <laughs> like that. I, listen, it's not going to be easy, but I think that's the quickest path to victory in the East. Here's path. the thing: Gone is bigger. Yeah, man. Gone is bigger. He's bigger. He's got that going for him. He's going to be hard to control on the ground. Not, not uh, impossible, but hard. Uh, I don't know about that. I think sometimes the guys, those light heavyweights, they might be a little bit more harder to hold. Again, the, mm. the, the bigger guys. Sometimes, almost like I was talking about with Islam. Islam takes down, he gets Drew Dober, he controls him like a baby. He gets mm-hmm. down, he gets he gets um uh um the tattooed uh, the, uh green green Bobby Green Bobby takes green. it down. How mm-hmm. these guys are arguably better wrestlers and more powerful than Volkanovski. Uh-huh. That's a good saying. point. I mean, he gets a, you get a bigger guy down. Sometimes I'm on top of a big guy, and then you get a guy or again a little guy like a little bit more. They squirmy to get up. Mm-hmm. So you're right. Body, head and arm chokes all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they can choke. I, I'm telling you, I, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm way to fuck off, but I feel he's going to take him down. And he's going to smoke him. But who knows, man? I don't know. You never have- know. That's why we got to tune in. You never know with these fights. Yeah, it's exciting, man. I would like to ask a question about possibly. Uh, now, let's just say you have to uh, train to fight Matt Sarah. Uh, what would be some uh, behind the scenes? No, (laughs) no, not at all. I'm asking a legit, like a question of what is the thinking behind and what is the philosophy and what is the, the, uh, the strategy and what are the conversations like? And before you get into that, wait for for us really quick that night in Montreal, look, did you ever hear anything like that? Definitely. Incredible. It was incredible. The challenge. It was definitely. The chance, just like Jimmy has fever dreams of um, <laughs> uh, Derek of, Brunson. Of Derek Brunson, he gets these, <laughs> these fever dreams. I, with me, nightmares of your chance of fuck you, Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, like could, they, could they really be all saying that? And, dude, it was, <laughs> how about this? Longo's not a guy with a soft voice. I couldn't hear him between rounds. Nothing. Incredible. It was crazy. It but was- anyway. Listen it worked all right. It worked let out me tell right. you. Let me tell you something, okay? That was 2008. I just looked it up. Yeah. Matt Serra had knocked out George St. Pierre mm. in Vegas, caught him with an overhand right, punished him with blows, Houston, Texas. finished the fight. What's that? In Houston, Texas. Oh, Houston, Sorry. Texas. Excuse me. Yeah, excuse me. Saying, yeah. Sorry. The rematch in Montreal. Now, you're telling me how would we game plan for him? You know what? I, I was telling George, I was rewatching the fight and Matt hits hard. Matt hits hard. He hits hard. He's got power. I was like, George, you're standing too tall. You're standing too tall. You got to get down as low as possible. You got you to get as short as he is underneath. Because if you don't get underneath, you're going to get clipped with those, those, those right hands. You know, those right hands are powerful. So Montreal comes around and Matt Sarah, I remember him. He, you were sponsored by a gun company. Buy yeah. guns, sell guns. Am I right? Yes. Let me tell you something. Let me say something. Canada's like a gun control type company, like a country. You know, they're they're not like super pro. It's not like the U.S. You know, it's like the guy's wearing guns. He's in the U.S. He's telling us he's gonna beat George twice. I remember you were flashing too, and yeah. you were being a good bad guy. It was great. It was awesome. It was it was brilliant. And uh, I remember after the first round, Greg Jackson turns around and he tells me, "I've never heard a crowd like this before. Like we're 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 going deaf." Because the crowd was cheering so hard, like it was like our, my ears were gonna pop. I could, we couldn't hear each other. The fighters couldn't hear anything we were saying. Forget coaching. These two guys were fighting to the death. The crowd was unbelievable. I've been in stadiums all over the world. I've never heard anything like that. It was insane. It was, it was insane. insane. 
And know what's great though? After I lost, the crowd was great to me though. Yeah, and yeah. The, afterwards, they were people. great. Yeah, you know, their boy won. They were fucking just <laughs> they were high fiving me on the way back. Sarah, yeah, we love you. Like, All right, cool. But yeah. uh, but yeah, listen, George was not. George was on fire that night. He was so channeled in. If I had the my best night, I feel I could have did like maybe Nick Diaz did and, and got to the end of it. You know what I mean? Mm. But he was not going to lose that night. Hey, listen, I love George, though. George is a great guy. We spoke recently, and I'm doing something with him in Manchester, England. We're going to do a little, like, signing together type of thing. Are we thing. doing number oh, three? Oh, nice. Are we doing number three? It's one-on-one. No, one. no. <laughs> you see this now? This is for the peace sign. This oh, is okay. not about number two. So, yeah, yeah, me and George are cool, and we That's like awesome. to geek out about Star Wars. I don't know if you know that about us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, oh, yeah, George is like me with that. We, <laughs> we're dangerous geeks. But uh, yeah, that was some time. Oh yeah, but so that's so, yeah. So you got the answer, Jimmy? About how to yeah, I just I'm just Jimmy, curious you, when when you, when you have something, Jimmy. Not at all, no, no. But when you I'm have to prepare something? for Matt Sarah, what is the uh, you know? There's very few people you can ask about this, but what 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 goes into preparing for Matt for for a rematch after such an amazing upset? Like, what does that do to a fighter when they are the champion and they lose what what is considered the biggest upset? Like, how does it affect the fighter mentally? How do you prepare them? You know, I, I love what Matt said before their first fight. He said, everybody's counting me out, but I'm not counting me out. That's what matters. You know, he said something along those lines. And I was like, damn, man, this guy, he really believes in himself, even though nobody, I think that went down as the greatest upset in history. Yeah. And you have to be as equally mentally strong as Matt, because Matt's going in there to fight to the death. And I was telling George, you know, you got to be ready. You got to be ready to fight to the end, to the bitter end. Because you remember, like, I don't know if you remember when George was getting hit, he, he tapped. And I was telling him, you got to get in that same mentality as him because Matt's a very intimidating guy. When he shows up on fight night, he's super confident. He's ready to fight to the bitter end. And, you know, the referee has to stop it. He, he, he's going to, he's got that toughness, you know, and you got to match that because Matt won't go out unless you put him out on his shield. You know, you got to, you got to match that mentality because he's a very intimidating guy, Matt. Very intimidating. And if he gets in your head, he's going to beat you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen. Don't worry, George took care of that. So listen, <laughs> we're all buddies now. <laughs> Definitely. Hey, let me ask you, Vaz. Yeah. Fuck all this fight talk. What are you doing with day to day without the school? I know you have a family. Give me some. What I know you're big into reading books. What book are you reading? What TV show are you watching with your wife? Let us know what's going on. <laughs> Come on, man. I'm always looking for a new series. Uh, I'm watching I'm, Yellowstone, all three of them. I fucking love it. But go ahead. What, what's Yellowstone? Oh, it's Kevin Costner and in, in a fucking ranch. And he's fucking, where are they in that ring? <laughs> I got to watch it. I got to check got, it out. He's got people wanting his land. He's not wanting to give up his land. He's got a Is that Netflix? Guy. Oh, it's great. Is it Netflix? Yellowstone? Uh, Yellowstone. I'm, I bought it on the uh, Amazon Prime. Oh, okay. I got that. Uh, and now on, on the Paramount not Network, there's the 1883, which is like the Western of it. I watched that. It's a prequel of it. And then there's also 1925. And I think that's with, uh, that's the one with Harrison Ford that they're showing now. I'm watching that as well. So it's very cool. But uh, doing, what are you into now for us? Me, me and my wife, were we were watching all the Dexters. You remember Dexter? Oh, oh yeah, this is a new one now. So we were watching it from the beginning. That's probably my favorite series, Dexter. Yeah, shit. Serial killer. He works for the cops, but he's like a psychopath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's amazing, amazing show. And then there's the new blood, Dexter. So we're we're working our way up to the new seasons that came out the last few years. I don't know when they came out, and I'm just rewatching that now. It's it's quite amazing. I love that show. What was that actor's name? I I know the actor's name, and it's going to drive me nuts. No idea. Yeah, I can't remember. Fuck. Thanks for stumping us at the end, Jimmy. No, I'm sorry. I just was, uh, I'm just kind of curious. Well, shit, Jimmy, listen. You look up that name. Oh. Michael C. Hall. Thank you. I never would Michael have remembered C. that. Not to confuse with Michael Anthony Hall, who's fucking great in 16 Candles. Yes, he and, is. Yeah, don't watch that with your kids. It's not, I thought, I thought I could, but no. 16 Candles? Never yeah. heard of it. Oh, it's uh, you crazy Canucks. You don't got those, <laughs> those coming to age movies with the, the the guy, the boys trying to get the girls and then they, they're in high school. It's like one of those John Hughes. You ever hear John Hughes? John Hughes? I'm not really big on, on celebrities. I don't know much about them. 
Yeah, me neither. Sixteen but, yeah, candles. Yeah, this is like stuff from the childhood. He, I yeah. believe all the. Uh, oh no, that's Christopher Columbus. Who did the the, the Hughes movies? The, no, who did the not Matt Hughes? Who oh, this is an old Matt movie. Then. Old it's from the yeah, 80s. Old they, old they were old. like the, the the movies that kind of defined teenagers in the 80s. Uh, Molly okay. Ringwald and like, you know, like uh, those type of things. But, you know, teen angst and teen confusion, The Breakfast Club, all that shit. Mm-hmm. And that reminds me, Jimmy, and this goes yes. to you, Garaz. Don't you forget <laughs> about me. Anyway, we're going to go. Listen, yeah. Garaz, what are you? Jimmy, I almost made it through an episode. I'm sorry to embarrass you in front of me. You didn't Bob. embarrass me. I'm not uncomfortable <laughs> when I sing. You could you never embarrass me. Staring across a cage, being in the other corner with me, seeing me all angry. He's not used to the <laughs> ball man singing. This is a different part of me, Froz. We could have been hanging out. <laughs> Jimmy. Sure. Let's yeah, Frost, do you want to plug anything? Uh, is there anything that you want to promote? Uh, I got a, I got my website, jujiclub.com. Juji as in jujitsu club, jujiclub.com. I, I release uh, instructionals regularly. I have a great video called Strong and Stable Knees. It's a bestseller, how to keep your knees super healthy, strong and stable back, how to build your back, keep it healthy for jujitsu, wrestling, any combat sport whatsoever, any sport whatsoever. Check out Juji Club. That's my new uh, thing. And I'm a TriStar Gym, man, twice a day, every single day. Yes. Hey, man. Like I said, we, you don't just teach the fighters. You teach everyday people. Um. Yeah, I teach all levels. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I, I'll tell you, some of my favorite classes are the uh, are the white belts, the fundamentals mm-hmm. class. And I just started an over 40s class that I teach on Wednesday. Oh, night. really? Oh, I call it the mask. That's cool. Oh, I'm teaching these old fuckers how to take land. <laughs> you know what it is? It, my older guys and girls, like, I just want to keep them on the mat. So, a lot of times, even if these younger kids are not bad kids, like a blue belt or a, mm. they do the advanced class, they see a higher belt and they just try to get them. They don't. Mm-hmm. And these, I just want to keep my older guys on. It's not like it's lighter training, but it's going with people their age. And it's all, again, about keeping them on the mat. You know, mm-hmm. so when they get these young guys who are like spazzing on them and they're just fucking getting hurt and being jerked around, we slow it. You know, we still get the good training. Listen, I'm, I'm 43. I totally hear you. I get it, man. Yeah, I'm but totally, you can, I, you're gonna be you're gonna still be Asha Garami in the fucking. <laughs> it keeps us young for us. Yeah, it does. It I'll does. be back at my school later. But uh, I feel like I'm too old to start. I'm 54. I, I feel like I, I can't start at 54. It's just I'll I'll never be any good at it. Raz, mm. you're gonna, no, you're you gonna got to one of your speeches because this he's being a he's being a Debbie Downer. Being, <laughs> you gotta go in. You gotta go in and drill. Don't roll. Go in and drill, and then after drilling, do calisthenics. Do a little bit of calisthenics till so you build your body up. But go in and drill, 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 drill for a year. Don't roll. Take care of your body, and then after that, start with floor rolling. Start with technical rolling, yes. and 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 go with guys who know what they're doing. Don't go with any beginners. Go with purple belts and up the guys who Matt tell you are okay to roll with. Because at fifty four, you got to be smart about it, you know, because it will keep you young. Definitely will keep you young. It'll reverse the clock. Okay. Reverse the clock. Fahaz, one more time. You you said your website. What is it again? One more time. Jujiclub.com. So like jujitsu, jujiclub.com. And I love your stuff. I've seen you teaching jujitsu, and I'm a jujitsu man. I love everything you teach. I do. Thank you, brother. Likewise, man. Thank you, guys. Jimmy, Pleasure you having doing? you on, man. Thank you. I have nothing to promote. The Paramount is sold out, um, except for a few single tickets. And I got tickets going on sale. I'll, I'll plug them on Wednesday. Matt, you're coming, I hope. I'm, I'm fucking going to be, cannot wait, you know? Yes. He's playing in Long Island for Oz. I don't know if you know about my little bird friend here. He's a very famous. Comedian, right? Yes, 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 I know. Um, yes. Better not superstar, a crack superstar. superstar. He's funny What's as that? shit. Yeah, I know. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, listen, it was great. I mean, I, I don't take compliments well at all. I, I don't care for them. <laughs> no. I, it, was great, it was great having you on, man. You're brilliant. And, and so it's so insightful. And I'm going to be thinking about that brain thing all day, the wrinkling brain. That was such an <laughs> interesting thing. Thank you so much, man. Thank you, guys. Yeah. It was a pleasure. All right, Frost. Take care. Take care. Thank you. Ciao, ciao, boys. <laughs>